Hello and welcome to Mark's Tech Talk. In this video we're going to see how to create a frequency response uh, graph using Microsoft Excel. Uh, so uh, we'll choose frequencies uh, around the range of the audio frequencies that people can hear. Uh, so I'm going to enter in the uh, name of the data, the header frequency. And I'm going to include the units here, hertz, uh, because I want that in the uh, header uh, on the first row rather than in the cells where I have the data, because in the individual cells with the data, I only want numeric information. And uh, so I'll show you that in just a minute. For the second column, I'm going to put voltage in. Okay, and that may be a little difficult to see, so I'm going to zoom in a bit so you can see that more clearly. So you can see I've entered the frequency and the voltage. I put the frequency in hertz, but I can't quite see that, so I'm going to increase the width of my column. And there it is, frequency in hertz. And I'll do the same thing for the voltage. Okay, so I'm going to uh, choose what frequencies I'm going to measure. And uh, probably what we're doing is uh, doing a lab experiment where we're measuring the output voltage of an amplifier and we're varying the frequency and keeping the input constant. And we want to see how the output varies with frequency. So I'll choose again about the audio range. The audio range that people can hear uh, is considered to be from 20 hertz up to 20,000 hertz. Uh, but we're going to go a little bit beyond that just for illustration purposes. I'm going to start at 10 hertz instead of 20. And then I'll enter, let's say, 25, and then a 50, and 100, and 250, and 500, and 1,000, and 2,500, and 5,000, and 10,000, and 25,000, and 50,000. Okay, so again, I'm going a bit beyond the audio range. Audio is from 20 hertz to 20,000. We're going from 10 hertz to 50,000 hertz. And I am entering all the numeric information, and I'm putting everything in in context of hertz. Uh, once I reached 1,000, I didn't switch over to kilohertz because I want everything to be in the same units using the same metric prefixes. Now, uh, normally we would measure... Uh, the voltage, and uh, that would be the results of our lab, but I'm not actually doing a lab here, so I'm just going to pull some numbers out of the air here uh, just to illustrate how this might work because the point of the video is to make the chart, make the graph, uh, and not necessarily do the experiment. So I'll just pull some numbers out that we could use for an example here. I'll say 9.3, and let's say 9.4, and then 9.4. Um, and then we could say a 9.6 and a 9.9 and we'll say a 10.1 and a 10.3 and a 10.4 and then we'll say 10.1 again and maybe a 9.9 and we'll say a 9.6 here and maybe a 9.9 three there. Okay, again I just kind of pulled these numbers out of the air. Uh, the numbers themselves are not that terribly important. What we want to do is now to graph the voltage versus frequency. Uh, so the independent variable will be our frequency, that will be the horizontal axis, and the dependent variable will be voltage. So we're going to put that on the vertical axis. Your independent always goes on the horizontal and your dependent goes on the vertical axis. So the way we do this is to click on the Insert tab, and then uh, under the Insert tab, about halfway across the screen, you're going to see Charts. And we want to insert the chart that's labeled Scatter Chart. And uh, once we do that, we're going to have a selection of different types of scatter charts. We want the one that's labeled Smooth Lines with Markers. Smooth Lines with Markers. So there is our chart of our results. It's as simple as that. Now, occasionally with Excel, 
uh, you'll find that uh, it will create the chart but it doesn't fill in the data. Uh, so what we're going to do is to show you how to fill in the data just in case the Excel doesn't fill it in for you. Uh, there may be some minor differences with different versions of Excel. They're all pretty similar. Uh, I'm using the Windows version. Uh, even the Mac version uh, is not a lot different. So if you have a slightly older or a newer version, you're going to find it is very similar to this. So we are, again, uh, in the uh, Chart Tools toolbar. And in the Chart Tools, we want to click on Select Data. And I'm going to remove the data that's in there just to illustrate how to add it in case Excel does not add it for you. So I'm going to click on Add. And then I can name this. I'll put, name it Amplifier Output. Amp Out. Okay. And that will be our name. And then for the X, I'm going to choose uh, the data points that are on the horizontal axis, which will be our frequency. So I click on this box that says Series X Values. Click on the box on the right-hand side and select the frequencies that we want to plot. Click on the box again, and then I do the same thing for the Y. I want to select the Y values, which would be the voltage. Click on the box, and there it is. I have my values. Okay, And I simply say, OK, at that point, I have all the values I want. Now that looks a little strange because if you'll notice, all my data points are all uh, tightly grouped on the left-hand part of the graph, and there's hardly any data points on the right. And that has to do with the data I've entered for frequency. Frequency spans a very, very wide range from 10 hertz up to 50,000 hertz. And right now I'm graphing that on a linear axis. So what I want to do is to change that to logarithmic. So I'm going to put my cursor over the top of the x-axis and right-click. Once I right-click, I say Format Axis, Format Axis. And I can then click on a checkbox here that says Logarithmic Scale, Logarithmic Scale. And that changes our chart uh, and the particularly x-axis to a logarithmic axis. So I'll close that out so you can see that. Now, uh, it's not really apparent that that's logarithmic. Uh, what will make it a little more familiar is if I right-click again and I choose to add minor grid lines. And now it is apparent that I'm using a logarithmic scale. Okay, And if I wanted to stretch that out, maybe I wanted to start my x-axis not at 1, but start it at 10. So again, I can right-click, say Format Axis, and instead of starting having minimum value of 1, I'm going to have a minimum value of 10. And now my chart starts at 10. So I am using the uh, whole area of the chart in order to get my information. Now this is a bit misleading. You'll see this sometimes uh, when people use graphs. They don't start at 0. Uh, and that presents a kind of misleading information. So I want to do the same thing. Uh, on the Y value, and that is to change the minimum value. Uh, so I'm going to say Format Axis by right-clicking on the Y axis and say Format Axis and choose the minimum value as being zero. Okay, you always want to have the minimum as being zero. And now if you look at your graph, and I'll close out this window, uh, you can see that the variation is very minimal there. Okay. Uh, it's not as pronounced as it was before because I'm starting from zero volts and going up and this line that's going through the through my graph is 10 volts. All right, so I got a pretty good graph there. Now the only thing is I have numeric information here, but I don't know what it stands for. If I saw this graph by itself, I really wouldn't know what it is. I see it's amp out, but what do these numbers represent? Well, what you want to do here is you want to go into chart tools and add chart element. Okay, under chart tools, add chart element. And I am going to choose to add axis title. Axis title. And I'll choose the horizontal one, and I will call that, let's say, hertz for frequency. Okay, uh, so all we do is just highlight it uh, and put in my hertz, and there it is. I can do the same thing with the vertical axis. I choose add 
chart element, axis titles, primary vertical. And I highlight it, and I'm going to enter in the, uh, uh, that would be voltage, I guess, okay? So I can just put a capital V there for voltage, and I'm done, okay? So now I can see I'm plotting voltage versus uh, hertz for frequency. If I want, I could write out volts, and I could write out frequency, whatever information you want to put to identify what that axis is plotting. Uh, so you can uh, utilize that and uh, create your graph, and you're pretty much done now. Accepting, how are you going to use this? Well, most often you want to use this in uh, a written report. So at this point, I highlight my graph, I go to the Home tab, and I say Copy. Once I copy it, then I'm going to go into Microsoft Word, and in Word, I can simply hit Paste, and my graph shows up. And there's my graph in Word. Now I can write a report. And this graph, I can, I can click on it, and I can stretch it out and make it bigger or smaller if I want. I can change the justification and center it, put it on the right-hand side, left-hand side. I can start entering my information here. Uh, this is my frequency response. Etc. Okay. Now, one thing I would suggest is whenever you add a graph or some kind of graphic like this into a written report, you should identify it. Uh, so for example, you can call it figure one. And then in your text somewhere, you refer to figure one. Okay. Uh, this is my frequency response shown in figure one. Okay. And then you just put a label on this and label it figure one, okay? And uh, you can uh, just put that in with type, or you can actually append that and make it part of the figure if you want. Uh, I don't want to get into much, into much into Microsoft Word. I just wanted to show you how to create that response curve graph. So uh, hopefully that helps you, uh, and uh, you can utilize that to uh, create your plots. Uh, hope you enjoyed this edition of Mark's Tech Talk. Uh, stay tuned for more. Thanks for watching.